What's up dudes, Chooch back with another one and today I'm out here riding around and all of a sudden somebody came up behind me ripping and I've never met this guy in my life before and he was on a RS-19 and I was just like holy cow man like this dude is flying and it kind of caught me off guard because I looked over my shoulder at first and I was like dude what is that behind me and it, I, whenever you're in the zone on this you just look enough to kind of make sure it's not something about to hit you you don't really look too hard to see what it is and all of a sudden dude came around the corner and he was ripping and I was like what's and up so you can get a good picture of what the RS-19 and the in-motion B12 look like and this guy is really giving this RS-19 uh, he's really riding it hard and he is not a novice rider by any means. So this is a good comparison, especially when we're taking off really hard in the corners and accelerating and whatnot. You can see right here, so he's on the RS Torque and you can just see on like a hill, for example, he's just taking off on, on the uphills. And I'm not giving it all it's got on my V12 right there. But for example, he's probably not giving it all it's got on this RS-19 either. And he's still just taking off up that hill. And the RS-19, guys, I really think is a, the best do-it-all wheel. If you want to just go all in, get something that's going to is just going to be something that's going to trail ride good, it's going to off-road good uh, in general, and it's going to be a durable wheel. Uh, Gotways, guys, I know they get a bad rep. And one thing I will say, though, guys, uh, a lot of the bad rep with Gotways just comes from people that are new to the community that have just seen a few um a few people in the community just talk bad about them i guess they don't really know much about these things guys i've been riding got ways since since these they came out and you know i've whenever something goes wrong on it it's easy to say hey you know this brand of wheel is bad whatever it may be but I think at the end of the day, the Gatway is actually a really good company. I think that whenever I say Gatway, I'm actually, t and you go and like look these up, it's going to say B Goad RS19 or B Goad EXN. The Gatway thing was the original name of this company, and it's like stuck in my head. And if I have to go back through every time I say it and <laughs> and say B Goad instead of Gatway, it would just be ridiculous. So Gatway is actually an old company that is now called Bigo. To any of you people that are new to this hobby and wondering why people call these wheels Gotways, but you look on the websites and there's no Gotway on the website. So that's that's a rundown of what's going on with that. It's pretty much the best when it comes to performance, um, ease of maintenance, and just overall just performance factor is what you want, guys. If you don't want all the bells and whistles and you just want something that's, that's going to work and it's going to be extremely fun and yet it doesn't look the coolest, it doesn't have the roll cage like the Sherman, it doesn't have um, all the, the fancy, fancy lights on it, it doesn't have like that sound wave type thing, um, but it doesn't need all that, guys. The RS-19 and that form factor of wheels if something goes wrong on, on one of those like i really don't mind it because those are so easy to work on like that form factor i have three of them like that i have an m, m super v3s i have the um, m super x and then i have the m super pro and those are all three before that one came out and they're all just they're all working perfectly fine and it's because you can do maintenance on them so easy and they're just there's nothing uh, overcomplicated about them. They, the parts are easy to find, especially now with so many people having these wheels. And I think it's just a really good option. And I think just simple upgrades, like you see right there, he has the upgraded pedals. He has the exact same pedals I have on my In Motion B12. Those are the Free Motion pedals. The uh, you see those black pedals? Those are called the uh, Free Motion pedals right there. And I ended up getting a flat tire, guys, on my InMotion V12 while we were out riding. And I was just cruising right there. I just just noticed it, like, going along. And I guess I got it flat. And that just shows the importance of using tire slime, guys. Um, 
this wheel, I, I usually always put tire slime in my wheels. I usually do it every single time. And I'm like, dude, I won't ride it without putting tire slime in it. When I got that EX in, I did not ride that thing for a week just because the tire slime didn't come in the mail. And so with this one, I, I don't know why I didn't do it. I was out of tire slime and I just never put tire slime in it. And it's literally sitting in there right now. I got to figure out what... Um, what my approach is going to be on this if i'm going to try to patch it or if i'm just going to try to fill it up with slime and see if it repairs it to ride it good enough for a little while but definitely guys you know that green tire slime stuff i'll link some of that below i use that in every wheel guys like for my sherman i use a ton of it i use like a whole bottle of it in that sherman i used a bunch of it in my exn every other wheel i have i have a ton of tire slime in it and i have not have i've never had an issue with a flat on the trails guys and the thing with the tire slime is it does its job even if you do get like a gnarly flat or like a gnarly thorn or something in your tire you won't really even notice it you'll you'll, you'll come back home and next time you go to ride it it'll be flat and that's really beneficial because um, you don't want to be getting a flat out there on the trail in the middle of nowhere and if you have t uh, slime in your tire you can just take a pump with you and nine times out of ten you can get lucky and if you do get a flat on the trails you can pump it a few times and that slime will maybe situate into that hole and then you can it'll hold good enough to get out of the trail it'll hold way better than if it, it didn't have slime in it you see what i'm saying so if you need to pump that um tire or that tire back up once you do get a flat it's just going to work way better if there's already slime preloaded into that tube essentially other than that, guys, the um, the InMotion V12 and the RS19, what are what are the big differences? Well, on the InMotion V12, your acceleration is going to be faster. So off, if we started off side by side, even though he's on the high torque uh, wheel, if we started off side by side, it would just be um, I would gain I would gain on him up to about 30 miles an hour, and after 30 miles an hour, he would just smoke me. And the his wheel goes about the same as mine top speed, but you, you it just is a lot smoother, guys. Whenever you're on that 19-inch wheel, as opposed to a little wheel like this, you see how I'm having to unweight and like kind of jump over all the manhole covers and all the bumps and stuff in the road. I don't necessarily have to do that, guys, but it just it, it, it's become habit now on this little wheel and if you don't want to have to do that all the time then go with like the rs19 but you see how i'm riding this uh in motion b12 like i'm literally um i'm having fun with it i'm having a ton of fun with it i love how nimble it is but i have adapted the way of riding this to where i'm always just unweighting jumping over every little thing and i love it i love that whole factor about it for sure but the whole thing is, if you don't want to have to do that, and you want to just be able to ride, like he, he's riding pretty much just as fast as I am because he's on a 19 inch wheel and I'm on the uh, in motion V12 right here, but he, he's kind of riding effortlessly. And you see, I'm really trying to have to put in a lot to navigating around all those little bumps and everything on, this, on a uh, smaller wheel. And that's just really the only difference, guys. It, it's just, and, and this wheel is, um it's really top heavy if you're coming from like the sherman guys like i was riding the sherman the other day and then i got on this and the sherman characteristics are just completely like opposite like so the exn and the sherman are kind of like bottom heavy wheels you know, they're kind of those stocky bottom heavy wheels and this one is just, just kind of tall and then all the weights up at the top and so it just behaves way different. And if you're coming from your Sherman or your EXN and getting on this, it's going to be like, whoa, dude, like this is a little bit squirrely. But it offers a unique riding style because you can really get aggressive with the way your foot plates um, uh, have that height off the ground. So with a smaller wheel and how high your foot plates are off the ground, it lets you really be able to twist and turn and navigate and spin around on this thing and jump it and everything really with ease. And that's one thing I love about the InMotion V12 is just having a powerful, small 16 inch wheel with extremely high pedals. So this brings me to the point of 
What's the difference in the InMotion V12 and the RS19, and why should you get one over the other? I'm not going to go into numbers, statistics, and all that stuff right now. You can look all those up. The website's below, guys, where you can pre-order these things and check them out for yourself. But when it comes to riding characteristics, guys, the InMotion V12 is the snappy acceleration king, and it is so nimble. You can throw all kind of tricks on it. You can spin on this thing. All those like one-footed little unique like park type tricks where you're going to be like one-footed backwards spinning on this thing. You're going to be able to uh, hit little curbs and uh, tail whips and bunny hops and just all the fun unique things you'd be doing in a city environment. The InMotion V12 is lightweight, fast, nimble, every feature on it. It's, it's sick. The difference is though, it really suffers guys on the stability and just the cruising. When you're over like 35 miles an hour, the RS19 is going to just cruise way better guys. That wheel is going to feel so much more stable and like you can hit potholes with it, you can hit any bumps, you aren't gonna have to worry about unweighting for the bumps. By unweighting, what I what I mean is have like you see how I have the power pads on here. These are the power uh, Clark pads 3D extremes. I love these, but these are really you got to have power pads on your V12 if you're gonna be riding it hard on the road because you want to be able to unweight. With the RS, you're not gonna have to to do that. So you can kind of make up your mind from that perspective of which one you want. You can look at the, the numbers below. Um, the RS19 is 22250 and the um, InMotion V12 is $2,299. So the difference is 50 bucks. So, I mean, just kind of look at it, make up your mind. And this, the, the, the best way I can explain it is the RS19 is just more of a do-it-all wheel, guys. It's going to trail better. It's going to cruise better. It's going to do everything better. The few things it's not going to do better is accelerate and be nimble. Basically, with the V12, you're getting a smaller package, more fun, a crazy acceleration, all the bells and whistles. RS19 is your do-it-all, better off-road. The RS19 is going to cruise better at higher speeds, and it's just going to be a lot easier to work on generic-type wheel. Um, a lot less components overall in the RS19, which, at the end of the day, is arguably a good thing or a bad thing, just who you're asking. The V12 looks like you're getting more for your money, but don't underwrite the RS19. The RS19 definitely has its place, guys. And I think out of these two right here, if I only had one, I'd probably go with the same setup he has. The RS19, with some Clark pads, and some good aftermarket pedals. And you'd have a great wheel. Anyways, dudes, it's been Chooch. If you want to pick up one of these, links below. The links help the channel tremendously, guys, and help me keep going to different places and keep experiencing new stuff on the, these EUCs and bringing it to you. So if y'all enjoyed that video, click the links below. And if you purchase your wheels through there, it is no extra cost to you and helps the channel out. So anyways, dudes, it's been Chooch. I'll see you dudes in the next one.